Volca, the seat is yours, and the cleaner. Yeah. So. Hello and welcome to my presentation. Uh, as I already mentioned, I'm Wolfgang Wallner and for my master thesis uh, I was dealing with the simulation of 1588, the precision time protocol. Uh, I've divided the, the presentation with the usual layout, so I will start with an introduction and my motivation. Uh, I will explain the basic concept of what are clocks and clock noise, what is the precision time protocol. Uh, I will describe my implementations of these things and finish the presentation with conclusions and an outlook. <coughs> so first of all for the motivation, uh, I studied at the, at the Institute for Computer Engineering and there we are quite interested in real-time systems. If you have a real-time system, uh, a distributed real-time system where things uh, are coordinated according to time, we need what is called a global time base. Each node in the distributed systems system needs to have a feeling about the current time. Uh, depending on the actual application that is done with such a real-time system, the requirements are different. So for some systems you need uh, fault tolerance, others are especially cost. Um, sensitive and there are many different technologies for clock synchronization and in the re recent years IEEE 1588 uh, became a quite interesting alternative <coughs> uh, in general 1588 is a standard for synchronizing local networks um, where you need to reach precision in the sub microsecond range uh, and it is allowed that the individual nodes um, you might invest some money in the local node, so it's not a software-only solution, you might assume hardware support. PTP is quite flexible, which also means there is a, a large design space. And so, uh, unfortunately, it's still quite expensive. So if you're interested in how to, to try out different configurations for PTP, you can't just go out and buy a lot of equipment and plug it together. This is why we were interested in simulation. So to try out different configuration, do parameter studies, uh, be flexible and cost efficient. <coughs> so the problem statement for my master thesis was I wanted to provide a simulation framework for PTP and it should be simple to use, uh, efficient, it should run on a, on, a, on a standard laptop and hopefully be, be realistic. Uh, and as with any kind of simulation, you need to, to think about how to model your components. <clears throat> In my case, the, the system that I wanted to simulate our networks with uh, local clocks and a clock synchronization. So I needed to simulate network components, cables, switches, and so on. Local clocks for local time estimates and PTP to measure how wrong my, my own clock is referring to a master. Uh, I started with some literature research and I soon found Omnet and INET, which you all know. Uh, and prior work suggests that for simulating networks, Omnet is the way to go. For the clocks, you have to know uh, how clocks are influenced and how they can be wrong. So the influences on clocks might be uh, categorized into two um, categories, 
random noise and deterministic influences like temperature, pressure, aging, frequency drift. And for my project, uh, I skipped the deterministic influences because of time constraints uh, and only focused on the random noise. And finally, for the PTP extensions, uh, I needed simulation models for PTP hardware. So a network infrastructure that is capable of timestamping Ethernet frames. And I needed PTP software components. Uh, for the hardware, I decided to extend the INET models. So for example, INET provides an Ethernet MAC, and I extended the Ethernet MAC to be timestamp, uh, <coughs> to be capable of providing timestamps. Uh, for the software, I've implemented my own PTP stack. So my problem statement revised is provide a PTP simulation in Omnet and provide realistic clock noise, which directly leads to my simulation model of clocks. Any digital clock might be sim uh, simulated with a model consisting of two <coughs> components. One component that oscillates with a hopefully stable frequency and a second component that counts these oscillations. And a real device, each of these components may contribute to the overall noise. But for my simulation model, I do not care uh, where the noise comes from. I only care about the, um, the final impact of different noise sources. So for my own simulation model, I assume that both of these components are perfect. And I introduce a new component specifically to generate noise. So my modified simulation model for a digital clock looks as follows. I have an absolutely perfect oscillator, then a noise generator that adds some kind of noise, uh, a perfect counter, and finally a linear correction stage. <clears throat> the linear correction stage is inspired by how uh, real PTP network interface cards work. For example, um, uh, Intel network cards that have PTP support, they provide a register where you can write um, a correction factor into the register and from that point in time, that, uh, the local clock will scale with this factor. Uh, an important time, uh, uh, term for my um, simulation model is that of time deviation. This is a, a term that comes from the discipline of frequency stability analysis. And it basically tells you how wrong your local clock is now. Uh, as a simple example, it might look as follows. In a perfect clock, um, on, the, on this axis we have the correct global time, uh, and on this axis we have the local estimate, and if in a perfect clock, they, they would always agree. Uh, if our oscillator now is either too fast, like here, um, it would reach the, uh, the estimate 1 before the actual point 1, or if it is too slow, it would reach the point 3, uh, actually after the real point in time 3. And in a real device, this curve won't look like this. Uh, it might look like this. So what you can see here is that longer intervals are influenced by um, <coughs> low frequency noise, and short intervals are influenced by high frequency noise. And in a typical quartz oscillator, all kinds of these noises will be present. Now we come to a related but different topic, the precision time protocol. <coughs> As already said, it's another network synchronization protocol uh, targeting local networks. And for the concepts, in a, P in a PTP network, a local node is called a clock. They can have multiple interfaces, which are referred to as ports. The standard defines um, a specified port state machine for each of these ports. And depending on the actual state a port is in, they will uh, send out different messages. And PTP assumes that local nodes are capable of timestamping when a message leaves a port and when a message uh, is received at the port. And it also assumes that the local clock is scalable. So, if you plug together some arbitrary PTP nodes, uh, the first thing they will do is establish a clock hierarchy. So um, as you can see here, a ring, 
uh, will be broken up and you will always get the tree. Ports will be master or slave uh, and this then uh, is the way the synchronization works. All these clocks will be synchronized to the master. <coughs> and to break up rings, some ports may go into a passive state. The actual synchronization then is done by time distribution. Master ports will send sync frames and slave ports will carry out the path delay estimation. So when a slave receives a sync frame from a master, it can estimate how long the, the message has been on its way. And PTP also provides a configuration interface. Uh, now we come to the part of the presentation where I will tell you how I implemented the clock model that I have described here. <coughs> Uh, basically, uh, I needed a similar interface as Omnet provides with the sometime and the schedule at uh, API, but I needed it to, uh, related to a local clock, not the perfect global time. Uh, I followed the usual uh, divide and conquer strategy, so I've uh, assigned different models, different tasks. First of all, I've implemented a class called a hardware clock. The purpose of this model is to transfer the perfect continuous real time to a local non-perfect discrete estimate of time. This would basically implement uh, what the quartz oscillator would do. Uh, and to get noise, um, I've separated the generation of noise to the, um, time trans from the time transformation. The noise uh, generation is done in the time deviation generator. So this is actually where my noise generation happens. As I mentioned earlier, I have left out deterministic influences, for example, temperature. So if I, uh, I or someone else would like to extend my model with uh, temperature dependence, uh, you could extend the time deviation generator with temperature influence. So the, the time deviation generator gives you the, the current time deviation, or you may also, also ask it for the, an estimate of a future time deviation. The next step then is an adjustable clock. So in the hardware clock, uh, we have an, uh, the time is, um, uh, is an arbitrary number. It starts at zero and increases with it each tick of the clock. So um, two clocks cannot be uh, um, um, we put them in relation to each other. What the adjustable clock now does is it provides an abstraction so you can actually set the time on such a clock and it also provides support for linear correction so you can tell the adjustable clock to scale faster or slower. Uh, these together would then provide um, a local alternative for the same time API and the third stage, the schedule clock, <coughs> would be a local alternative to the schedule at, schedule at API. So you can ask the schedule clock to schedule a future event referring to your local time. Uh, you can cancel the event and internally it will save all the, the scheduled events in a queue and only for the head of the queue it, it will ask the hardware clock for the inverse transformation from the local discrete time to the actual real time that uses the schedule at API of Omnet. Uh, the PTP implementation is rather straightforward. PTP is not a very difficult protocol. Uh, I defined a basic PTP node that can be um, inherited to different PTP classes. It, it can be a PTP ordinary clock, a boundary clock, and so on. Uh, and depending on the configuration of the basic PTP node and it inherits some of its design from the standard host and the Ethernet switch from the INET library. The most important component here is the PTP stack which implements uh, most parts of the IEEE 1588 <coughs> and this is a general purpose PTP stack so it does not know that it is used for PTP over Ethernet. PTP can be used over several protocols uh, and for my uh, implementation, I've provided a second component, which is the PTP Ethernet mapping. 
which implements the mapping that is specified in Annex F of IEEE 1588. <coughs> when a slave clock has an estimate of how wrong it is, depending on the master, it needs to correct the local clock. And for this, you need some kind of clock server. There are many different approaches on how this could be done. And for my simulation, I've implemented a simple PI controller. Then I also needed some glue logic just to um, attach my application to uh, the ESA type that is specified in 1588. And I've modeled a network interface card uh, with a clock model as I have described it. Uh, it has a, a model of a phi, so I can, model, I can simulate different phi latencies <coughs> and an extension of the INET Mac with timestamping capabilities. Okay, so as I finished my project, all the code that I have implemented is available on my GitHub page. Uh, the detailed description of all the theoretical concepts can be found in my thesis. Uh, and to create awareness of this project, I also handed in papers for two different components, uh, conferences. Uh, this is the conference that deals with IEEE 15.8 and you basically know the second one. Future work. Uh, I have left out several PTP features. It would be interested to have deterministic clock influences and what I did not uh, implement in my simulation models would be path delay variations in the switch queues. <coughs> and it would be interesting to see the influence of different clock servers. My personal con conclusion from this project is that the simulation approach for PTP uh, is quite feasible. It's also feasible to simulate clock noise. <coughs> um, a side effect, uh, having a simulation with a graphical user interface for PTP turned out to be a very useful tool to explain other people how PTP works. Uh, and I've given this talk several times now and as far as I can tell there's strong interest in having a simulation for PTP. This concludes my presentation today, and I'm looking forward to your questions. Okay, Wolfgang, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Yes, there is a your contribution, not part of the IEEE 1588 standard, am I right? Yeah. Now, IEEE 1588 standard is only providing the offset correction, but uh, there is no scheme for... It, it does not tell you at all uh, how to correct the offset. Yes. The actual paragraph in the standard is very short and it only tells you that the slave should minimize the offset. Uh, this correction, how it is implemented, uh, is based on how hardware available on the market does it. Um, but any kind of correction would be would be legal in terms of 1588. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yes. I just and which one is standard and which one is uh, your own contribution to correct the clock? Okay. Yeah. So if we have a right now PDP module and simulation module for the clocks, what uh, are you going to simulate? Like if you have some specific domain in your mind, I don't know, maybe some financial simulations or or we would be just interested generally in PDP and generally, but, to but, but the domain that we deal with at the at the institute would, would mostly be like industrial automation mm -hmm. automation. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Ye